This is me and my mom. She joined me in the kitchen to share her weight loss journey and what it took for her to go from wearing a size 32, 34 to now a 16, 18. Today I have a special guest. The guest is my mom. Say hello. 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 How you doing? <laughs> they can't. They don't know your response if you say ask it. How you doing? Oh. But it's okay. All right. So today we're gonna make some cauliflower, but not any cauliflower. We're gonna make some baked cauliflower. Uh, and the sauce we're gonna make it will be something like a barbecue sauce with a little, little bit of uh, sweet chili. All right. So. I already have my cauliflower cut up here. Uh, you want to make sure it's in bite-sized pieces, okay? So I kind of already have it cut up a little bit. Now this is a head of cauliflower. Um, and I did buy it organic, so I'll try to eat as much as organic food as possible uh, when it's available and when I can afford it, okay? So I'm just going to cut it up just a little bit more. Again, this is a one head of cauliflower here. All right, as you can see. All right, and I did take the stem off. All right, I think it's pretty good, yes? Yes. Okay, do you see any pieces that should be cut anymore? No, that's good. Looks that's good? good to me. All right, cool. Now, for our flour. So, you know when you cook, uh, whether you're frying chicken or you find any type of food, you need some type of coating, okay? So, instead of using any type of flour or regular flour, I decided to use something healthy because we want to eat as close to the earth as possible. Um, so, my flour of choice is chickpea flour, okay? If you've never heard of it before, it's a thing, all right? So we have almond flour, we have chickpea flour, we have coconut flour, and so forth. So those are the uh, type of uh, flour alternatives you want to try to uh, uh, go towards, all right? So chickpea flour uh, you can be used for different things, for baking, whether you're baking brownies, you're baking cookies, uh, you're baking pie crust, uh, pizza crust, and so forth. So uh, cauliflower pizza crust is a huge thing now if we can go to pizzerias. So if you go to California Pizza Ki Kitchen, um, I think even one of those um, chain restaurants such as Pizza Hut's, Papa John's offer ca cauliflower pizza now, pizza crust now. All right, so good thing about this as well is um, you don't have to uh, use eggs for this because chickpea flour is good. It's a good alternative for eggs, all right? So now, so I have my flour here. Now let's talk about the spices. You ready? Okay, I'm ready. All right. So we have a little bit of the black pap uh, black pepper. Uh, we have some garlic powder. You know how I feel about garlic powder, especially in the winter time. All right. We have some ginger powder, uh, basil, turmeric, parsley, onion powder. Paprika, Himalayan pink sea salt, and cumin. All right. So now I use a little bit of both. Now I did measure. Uh, I did. I did do measurements for the different spices, whether it was a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon or one fourth, and so forth. And so I'm just gonna move these out the way, and voila. All right. So I have. I already have everything mixed up. All right. So I'm just gonna mix it up just like this. All right, all right, to make sure that it is an equal mixture, everything is good. Now, let's talk about some health properties about some of these, some of these spices that we use. So we know ginger is good for inflammation, uh, relieving inflammation and preventing them as well. All right, uh, we know uh, garlic is good for uh, the winter time, making sure you stay uh, well, all right? So it's good for preventing the common cold, all right? And the common cold, We'll good, turn to the flu. It's good for blood pressure too. They okay. Say lowering blood pressure. Okay, my mother said it's good for lowering blood pressure. Okay. All right, cool. So now I'm just gonna take my spices, mix it all together, like so, and I'm gonna pour it into my chickpea flour. Make sure I have all of it because I want all the seasonings. I want to make sure it's good. So I like very, very well seasoned foods here. And uh, so I want to make sure I have all the season, seasonings, uh, spices, I don't want to leave any behind. All right, so I want to make sure it's well mixed together, like so. All right, is that good? That's good. All right, cool. All right, so now, 
I already have my measurements of my water. So I have half a cup of water and half a cup of almond milk, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and pour my water into the mixture here. Mix it together a bit. It almost turn, looks like it's turning into a dough, mm -hmm. okay? So hopefully adding the almond milk will thin it out, thin it out a bit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We're working it. Oh yeah, you're doing it, son. That's why it's thinning out. All right, out. it's thinning out. It's taking some time, but it's it's coming along. Oh yes. <laughs> we, we almost had a dough. We almost was cooking some bread. Oh yeah. But uh, all right, begin it. It's turning. Oh yes. So maybe I should stir it a little bit more. Yeah, and Get a little to. bit lumps out. Yes. Yes. So would you prefer someone, or would you recommend someone use a spoon or use a mixer? A mixer. I would use a mixer, but you're doing good. Okay. Also, I think what would be good, son, is to add maybe just a little bit of um, the um, good stuff, say the olive oil. So you want to add a little bit of olive oil? Olive oil. To okay. Help keep it moist okay. as well while it's baking. Okay. It'll also help clean that out. Okay, well go get the olive oil and I'm gonna add just a little bit of onion powder. While you do that, just a little bit of onion powder here, and then you can add a little bit of olive oil. Just a little. Olive oil is good for you. Okay, so what's olive oil good for? It doesn't clog your arteries. <laughs> it doesn't clog your arteries. So it's a good alternative uh, uh, if you were wanting to use some type of oil. So you don't want to use vegetable oil or canola oil. So a good alternative for yeah. oils will be olive oil or coconut oil. Or, um, you know, different oils such as that. Yeah. Great seed, seed oil. All right. Is that good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it good? Yeah. Smells good too. Smells good already just with the herbs in it. The herbs and the spices is going to make the taste. So this is a great way of wanting to have something that's maybe baked or fried, but as a vegetable. Maybe you don't like to eat vegetables, but um, or maybe you like to eat vegetables, but you want something a little bit more tasty. All right. So this is a great way of incorporating, um, you know, something that's fun, that's healthy, uh, and that's tasty, okay? It's a different twist to making vegetables. Okay, sometimes, you know, we do want to be conscious about eating vegetables, but, you know, we just want a little twist, want something that's a little bit more tasteful, all right? So now, I have my mix. My mix is already done, all right? I think that's pretty good. You see how it evened out? It kind of liquefied a little bit more, all right? Now, I'm going to go ahead and um, dip the cauliflower and the sauce. This is the pan here. I lined the pan with parchment paper, okay? So, uh, just be take a note that I did not use uh, aluminum foil because when you use aluminum foil, uh, the content, uh, the food contents tends to stick, all right? So, you want to use parchment paper. Parchment paper is very um, readily available whether you go to Walmart or go to Food Line or go to ShopRite or... Uh, whatever you shop um, and uh, it's good for baking cookies brownies and so forth okay and my oven is, is already preheated to 400 degrees so not 350 it's preheated to 400 degrees all right so I'm gonna go ahead okay I'm gonna move this stuff out the way we don't need these things anymore all right cool all right so I guess we can just dip right mm-hmm yeah. So we're gonna be coating. Right. Like so. Okay. Mm-hmm. Alright. It's gonna be good. We're coating the cauliflower in our mix. And where do the barbecue sauce and stuff come in at? Once it's baked, then you add it on mm -hmm. or what? 
So okay. what is it? It's gonna. So uh, my mom is asking, when do are we gonna add the uh, the the barbecue sauce, our sauce that we're gonna make? Okay, so we're gonna allow the cauliflower to bake for about. 15 to 20 minutes and then we're going to take it out the oven and we're going to uh, add the sauce to the cauliflower that's been already baked and put it back in the oven, okay? Because you want the taste, the sauce to marinate, so you don't want to put it on there first because it'll burn. Right. So now you can see we are finally done. So we coated all of the cauliflower uh, and, and our, we batter and our batter and our batter. Mm -hmm. All right, and this is how it looks. All right, so now we're gonna put it in the oven. So again, we're gonna place it in the oven for 20 minutes, and in the meantime, we're gonna make our sauce. Instead of using butter, regular butter, I'm gonna use what's called Earth Balanced Butter, okay? And this one is soy free if you don't like to use soy. And of course, it is vegan, non-GMO, so this is a really good, healthy alternative to uh, regular butter, all right? So I have my little saucepan here. Um, the heat is already on, and it is on medium, okay? Uh, I do have my barbecue sauce already measured out, and I have a little bit of chili garlic sauce. All right, so if you know this brand, you know it's good, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and add one tablespoon of this Earth Balance butter alternative. Okay, as you can see, it's already melting pretty well. All right, just like regular butter, so you do not need butter. I think, I think the, one of the misconceptions is that, you know, the food won't taste the same, or that may be a major difference um, in how the food cook. Well, that may be true for certain things, but for the most part, it's gonna cook the same. This is melting just like butter, okay? Just like butter, all right? But it's not butter. It's not animal product, all right? So we have that now. We want to make sure the heat is not too high because you're going to, you can, you know, burn out all of the ingredients and then that won't be good. That's going to turn down just a little bit more because I do not want to start popping on me. I don't want that. All right. I'm going to go ahead and add my barbecue sauce. All right. All right, I'm gonna put this back on the heat here. I'm just gonna add a little bit of the chili garlic sauce because I don't want it to be too hot. I feel like if, you, if the food is too spicy, it's hard to really enjoy the food for me. Now, everyone is different. Some people like to use a lot of hot um, condiments to make their food spicy. I prefer not to because I don't want to be trying to huff and puff it. I want to try to enjoy the food, so we use a little bit. And that's the timer for the cauliflower, so we're just in time. And I'm just mixing it together. Alright, so now we have taken the cauliflower out of the oven. Um, it's been in the oven for 20 minutes, and remember we made our sauce, so we're just gonna Put them all in here, we're gonna mix it together, okay? So, just gonna all in here. All right, now as you can see, you didn't show, you didn't show the camera. Oh. Look at that. All right, so we have a, a nice, sauce here that we use for barbecue sauce and a little bit of the chili sauce all right we're gonna put it back in the pants <laughs> she I'm took the cleaning the, stuff up. she been cleaning the whole time as i'm trying to demonstrate the cooking so we had, we had the parchment paper inside but she took it out we're gonna reline the parchment paper and add this back in the pan so we can put it back in the oven so we can cook just a little bit more
we have it already in the pan, and I'm just gonna add just a little bit of the salt, just a little bit, just sprinkle, just, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right, and I'm gonna place it back in the oven for maybe, what, 10 minutes, 15? Uh, 10, 15 minutes. 10, 15 minutes. To crunch it. To, to make it more crunchy. 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 I'm getting ready to start sauteing uh, the onions because I'm going to make some couscous. So here are my onions here. I use olive oil uh, in the pan. All right. I'm going to add a little bit of the salt here. Okay, and some garlic powder. All right. Smells really good. Mm -hmm. All right. As you can see, it's beginning to saute. Oh, it's become translucent. Okay. I have a cup of couscous here. I'm going to pour it in. But right now, I'm just, I'm, I don't have any water, any liquid in here. I just have the onions garlic powder and uh, salt and it's dry so I'm pretty much browning or toasting the couscous just a bit so only liquid would be the olive oil the timer is going off so that just tells us that the cauliflower in the oven is done so now I'm going to add half a cup of water. Now normally I would have done maybe a cup of water. I'm going to do half a cup of water here. Now, I'm going to switch it up a bit instead of add, and I'm going to add uh, a little bit of coconut milk. Okay, this is light coconut, so it's half the calories. I'll do a half a cup of that. Okay, so this is going to make it more like like a souffle, like a little fluffy. And a little flavor, coconut flavor. Just a little bit. The only thing that, um, with the couscous is really cooked, so you have to take it off of the owl so that it won't burn. And then you cover it up and let it continue to cook with the heat that's in it. And now, there you have it. Okay, so we have the barbecue cauliflower uh, with a little bit of uh, the spicy chili uh, right here. And then we have the magnificent couscous, okay? So I'm just gonna like bring this up so you can see it right here. And you see it is still light and fluffy, but it is seasoned very, very well, okay? So then I'm gonna start plating, all right? So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this, put it on the plate here. Now you can just have this as a snack or you can put it, make it with the meal, however you choose to do it, it's up to you. All right. Oops, okay. It's scrumptious. Okay, as you see, it stayed as light and brown, but it still kept the integrity of the cauliflower. Because you see, you can still tell it's the cauliflower because it's it's white inside. All right, so here you go. Mm -hmm. Here it is. There you have it. Okay, we have a nice couscous, light and fluffy. And we have our cauliflower. All right. So what do you think? It's good. It's good. Okay, it has a nice little spice kick to it mm -hmm. and so forth. All right, so, and what is, um, you told me before we got started, you said, oh yeah, cauliflower is good for what? What did you say? Mm. That down for a minute. <clears throat> it's good for um, high in fiber. High in fiber. It's good, um, has some type of oxidant in it that fight against cancer. Mm -hmm. um, 
which is an antioxidant. Um, I did say fiber. 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 Yes. Uh, vitamin B. Okay. Rich in um, vitamin B. Yes. Mm hmm And also, I mean, it has a lot of good components in it uh, for your health. It's so forth. You could uh, Google it, and it'll give you more in detail. Okay, right. All right, so for myself, I am a plant-based, I have a plant-based, I follow a plant-based diet, but my mother does does not, okay? So for a while, it was kind of difficult for me to come to family functions and eat because everyone will be, it'll be heavy in meat. Um, and, and if there were some type of vegetable, she would, or someone would season the vegetable in some type of uh, meat. So it would be like neck, neck, turkey neck bones or so forth. And uh, my mom would say, well, it's not meat, you're not eating the meat, I was just seasoning it a little bit. But she became, she came around and she began to understand the difference of, 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 of a meat-based diet and a plant-based diet and we don't yeah. use meat at all. So I've been trying to kind of not convert, but trying to get my mom to eat more uh, plant-based. So incorporate a lot more fruits and vegetables in her diet and kind of limit the meat. Uh, I would like for her to not eat meat at all, but you know, to at least limit the meat. Um, so she has done well. So tell tell yeah. me about your journey and how you got to the point because like I'm like all about you know plant based and um, my mom she's been trying a lot uh, lately uh, to uh, incorporate a lot of more plants and vegetables in her diet. So yes, true. <clears throat> um, my thing is I may not like I told her, become a total vegan because I love eat my fish. Um, but I'm doing it more in a healthy way, healthier way. Uh, for the last three weeks, uh, I have been doing nothing but fruits and vegetables. And actually, it's a month now, and I've lost weight. I'm pretending to slim down. Um, I used to be close to 400 pounds, believe it or not, before I started getting serious uh, about this weight loss journey and starting to learn to live, to eat, to live, and not live to eat. And that is such a true statement. Um, my son always tried to encourage me. He had me going around from place to place to place trying different uh, foods that were healthy for me. Unfortunately, I wound up spending a lot of money <laughs> eating foods that I did not like. So therefore, he's like, well, Ma, okay, we're going to start cooking. We're going to start doing this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I started, you know, liking more and more vegetables because I wasn't a vegetable person. Long story short, I made lifestyle changes and I incorporated good food, healthy food, with um, exercising. I exercise every day. I do water aerobics every day, five days a week for 10 hours, which is two hours a day. I want to show you by being uh, persistent and uh, whether I had someone to go work out with me or not, I want to show you a pair of pants that I used to fit in before I changed my eating habits. Before I do that, as my son was saying, he want me to eat right and go vegan, but I know I would not always go straight vegan. What's the other vegan they have, they call son? Um, vegetarian? Yes, yeah, the vegetarian, yeah, when I would eat just like fish. Oh, pescatarian. Maybe. Pescatarian, yeah, I would eat fish. So, um, I think that's good enough, and I know my son is very proud of me. He told me he's proud of me. My children, all of them, are proud of me. And I would like to encourage someone that you may have been wrestling with losing weight. You know, I don't care how many times you fall, you get back up and try and try and try again. Have faith in yourself. Winners are not quitters. Just remember that. So you can win. If you don't quit, you will win. These are a pair of pants that I used to get in, fit in without a belt. Two people can actually get into these jeans. Yes, I used to. Son, remember? No, I don't remember. You don't remember? No, I don't remember. That's because he's my son. He never saw me as a big person. So my mom said she used to wear these pants, and I was very, very shocked. And it's, it's simply because I never saw my mom as a as, as a big woman. I never saw her as a big person. Although in her mind, and I guess physically she was um, obese, but as a child, I never saw my mother as an obese person. I just saw her as as she is, as mom. Um, but she said she used to wear these. I, I never seen these 
as a memory. I've never seen these pants. And I asked her if, she, if they fit all the way around. She said yes. Yeah. Yep. They fitted me without a belt. But I was like 28 pounds from being 400 pounds. And the only reason why I say these pants were to have a memory. To always look back and say, look where you've come from. And this was like 10 years ago. Uh, actually, it'll be 11 years. So I have kept the weight off. And I'm still losing now. I've been, well, three weeks ago, I did a uh, Daniel fast, which was number of fruits and vegetables and I came down another 15 pounds in a month. I started way before January. I started back in December the, the uh, 3rd. I started with myself. So um, plenty of water, eating right, it gets the job done. Okay. All right, so the, the thing about it is my mom actually gave up something that has been not plaguing her, um, but something that was almost uh, an addiction for um, for her. So not drug and alcohol, but other things can be addiction. So her go-to uh, thing was chips, okay? She loved chips. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you can see this because it's kind of tilted down, but there's a cabinet behind us, <laughs> right? It's at the very top. Now, I have three other siblings. Now. She always bought name, uh, brand name items, food items for herself. <laughs> so, well, she was eating Captain Crunch. We were eating <laughs> uh, berries and crunch, okay? So we always got the knockoff stuff. When she had chips and hoys, when, we had, when she had chip and hoys, we would have chips <laughs> and, 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 and just chips, all right? All right, so what she would do was, she would keep her name brand snacks at the very top cabinet and we had the pantry. And we would not get any of those name brand things until they got stale and old. And then she would offer it to us. <laughs> That's the only way we got those name brand things. But chips has been her go-to thing for a long time, even when she gave up uh, different like nutty, nutty buddy bars and all those uh, cakes and little Debbie's uh, snacks and so forth. But she's like, no, chips is my, my thing. I'm gonna give all these other things up and I'm gonna stick to chips. She's like, I gotta have my chips. Mm -hmm. But about what, three, four weeks ago, she gave up chips. Two months now. Two months, two months. Two months now, she gave up chips and she was saying some of the health benefits yes. were... Losing weight, blood pressure down, never had high blood pressure, but I kept check on it though because they say it's a silent killer. And being that I knew I was eating, putting all that salt in me, I get that pump, you know, and check my blood pressure. So it would run like 130 over maybe uh, 80 or something like that. Sometimes 76, I felt that was a little bit high. But now it's reading like 110, 108, 107, over 68, 70. The highest um, it's been is 111 over 81. Wow. Okay. So my blood Just now. two months without eating chips. So yeah. a lot of times, you know, we do make, uh, people can make a lot of progress uh, with weight loss, with uh, inflammation, leaving the, leaving the body, okay. which is dietary changes. Um, but chips were something that she stayed with and just by eliminating those, it brought her sodium count all the way down. And so she recognized those changes based off chips alone, okay? Yes. Um, you also, milk was a thing too, because I was drinking almond milk for a long time and mm -hmm. she was still drinking cow's milk. Right. And I was shocked when she had some almond milk in the refrigerator yes. and she was like, I'm just gonna try it. Mm -hmm. But she actually stayed stuck with it. It's been yes. years now. Yeah. It's been years now. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably the first um, uh, alternative, uh, uh, animal, uh, alternative thing that she actually uh, eliminated uh, and made a switch to was almond milk. Yes. Yes. Okay, because we know uh, milk, uh, cow's milk or animal milk can bring mucus to the body. If you have a lot of mucus in the body, you have disease. Okay, so disease cannot live in the alkaline body. But when you have a lot of mucus, that's when you start to generate a lot of diseases. So everyone has different genes in the body, whether it's a cancer gene, whether it's whatever gene that you have. So food alone can turn those genes off or they can turn them on. Okay, so just eliminating those, those different products or incorporate different herbs and things in the body can make a world of a difference yeah. okay so plenty of water plenty of water you can see my skin is beautiful <laughs> <laughs> I mean you know there's no makeup there I do have a little eyeshadow but as far as foundation and things of that nature none it will if you have bad skin or whatever water believe it right drink plenty of it it's, it filters the unclean things that's in you
Right, so you want to make sure you're drinking a lot of water. So I personally shoot to drink a gallon of water a day. So you will find me like if you work with if if you were to follow me at work or um, wherever, I always have a gallon of water and I bring a new bottle in um, every single day. Now on the weekends it kind of get kind of funny because you know I'm lounging around more, uh, I may sleep in a little bit or whatever. But you know. Eat, and I especially drink even sometimes a little more than a gallon if I end up going to the gym uh, because I'm drinking a gallon at work and then of course I'm saying I'm, I'm trying to stay hydrated while working out. Um, so those are some different things, uh, you know, lifestyle changes that you make. Um, it's very simple, very easy. Just little changes can make a world, world of a difference. Just like the, those eliminating chips, right? Yeah. And you just start small. Like, no one is telling you to just go completely, just like empty everything. Now for some people, that works, right? Um, for me, I'm not. A, I don't have an addictive personality, so I'm not easily uh, addicted to things, and I can go cold turkey on whatever. Um, and for my journey, my journey started maybe 2014. I wanted to start eating from the earth, right? And so the thing was, when I graduated college, you know, college you have a nice cafeteria, they cook for you every day. Now I did stop eating pork uh, in my freshman year in college. I started eating, stopped eating pork and beef, so I was just eating chicken and turkey, and so. When I graduated, I had to cook for myself. Well, that's when I started eating a lot of frozen uh, frozen milks. I would do like lean cuisines, healthy choices, but I just felt like I was it, taking it too much sodium, not real food, you know? Because I'm just using a microwave, which is radiation, to warm up those healthy frozen milks. Uh, and so I was like, you know, let me start cooking for myself. Well, I had some ground beef and I saw blood. Now, in my mind, I'm like, okay, there's blood, it's dirty, I need to rinse it off. And I, I remember I saw her, I rinsed off the ground beef. And I called my, and I put it in the, in the pan, it started popping. And I, I asked my mom, well, mom, how do you cook this ground beef? I don't know if you remember. Okay. And he was like, well, what did you do? And I said, well, I rinsed it off. He was like, you rinsed it off. <laughs> you are not supposed to rinse off ground beef. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but it has blood on it. Mm -hmm. And she was like, it don't matter. The, the heat will kill the germs, the bacteria. And to me, that still doesn't make sense because it's like, that's, that's, blood that you still taking in um so i was like i can't do that anymore so i'm just gonna do chicken well my chicken I, I didn't like the film that was on the chicken it still had some type of film on it um the slime very slimy um and it still wasn't clean to me and then sometimes i was overcooking it would be dry and i was like all right so my birthday came around i was like you know what i just want to do a cleanse i just want to eat from the earth right so nuts, berries, um, grains, fruits, vegetables. I just want to eat from the earth and just cleanse myself. And so I did it for 30 days and, 30, and I felt good after 30 days and I just kept going, right? So for me, it doesn't take a lot. I just cut it off. But for you, just take step by step, day by day, all right? So mom, she eliminated a lot of the meat, although she's not completely meat free. So she she's thinking about becoming more of a pescatarian, right? So any little thing helps, but she did eliminate out of her diet a lot of the sweets. So sugar, we know, is very addictive, right? And there was a report that said that sugar is more addictive than cocaine or crack. Right, so you know we have certain things in our body where genes or cells will latch onto different things. You have different receptors that may react to to uh, sugar, just like a drug. And everyone is different, so you know it's highly certain things can be highly addictive. But taking things one step at a time, one day at a time. I remember I, she, she's been in the water for a long time doing water aerobics. I try to join her, but the water makes me itch. <laughs> it makes me itch and it dries out my skin. I have really sensitive skin, and I just. I I don't like the water. Um, I, I love water. I don't like being in chlorine water. Um, and so I've been trying to get her to get on land, but she's, you know, she said that she don't want to be on land uh, doing like, you know, the treadmills or any other thing that's on land, like doing weights or whatever, because she says she has some different issues, maybe yeah. with like pain uh, when it comes to like, I guess pressure. Yeah. Uh, but the impact. Impact. The impact that you, you know that you do when jogging on the treadmill or that walking, you know, because by me being so heavy for years, you know, uh, my joints had started hurting and uh, so forth. And that was another reason why I got rid of all that weight because I didn't want to, you know, many reasons really I got rid of that weight because I didn't want to become a diabetic. I'm scared of shots, very much afraid of shots. So I didn't want to become a diabetic, didn't want high blood pressure, didn't want heart disease. I didn't want anything that being overweight offers. So I got with it. I got with it.
And what I like, is, going back to what you said, I love what, what you said when you said, I now, I, I, I eat to live yeah. and not live to eat. Yeah. Because so many people say, well, I can't do that. You know, it tastes good. Or, I'm gonna miss this, I'm gonna miss that. But you're gonna miss a lot more if you're not here to enjoy those right. things. Or if you have to take some type of shot, some type of peel, every single time you get ready to do something. Or you can't do other things because you spend all your money on medication mm -hmm. just so you can enjoy certain activities. So. These are preventative things that does not cost a lot. A lot of people say, well, you know, eating healthy costs a lot of money. That's not true, okay? That's a myth, all right? Um, these are just fruits and vegetables, very cheap. Now, again, if you buy organic, it may cost 20 cents more, 10 cents more, five cents more. Um, I've never seen anything over 50 cents more, okay? So that's just a myth, and you buy organic if you, if, when you can, okay? You don't have to, but no, that's a little better. But if you can, that's no pressure, so just, one step at a time, do a little better. So, what's next for you? The other thing I wanted to add, um, too, I wanted to live to see my grandchildren grow up. And I didn't want my children to have to start taking care of me. You know, not being non-mobile and non -mobile. all that. You know, and stuff like that. I was like, nah, you know, something got to give. And uh, all that bad eating, I gave it up. Um, what was your question? So, I just wanted to encourage, you know, people to that's that's having these weight challenges weight loss challenges to let them know that they can do it right you now have faith in yourself have faith in god trust god and, and i mean it, it'll work for you just don't give up what was your question so what's next for you and your journey um the journey my next journey is like since i've been losing weight i'm gonna stick to that i'm gonna stick to leaving the chips alone it's been two months and um so i will not go back to that praise god and um, the sweets, I, I, I stopped totally, son. The only thing I was hanging on to was my sugars and my coffee, and now I do the unsweetening. Okay. Um, it, it says no sugars, no calories, no, um, this by, um, what is it, classmate? What uh, is it? Uh, I don't know. Somebody made, anyway. Um, but then they have some by great value too, but it's zero sugars, no additives, and it's, it's really good. It's really good. So now I can enjoy a cup of coffee without the added sugars. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So your next step is to just stick to it. I'm going to stick to that. I'm, okay. I'm sticking to it until I see myself get down to a, a size 14. I don't want to be a skinny mini. Skinny mini is not for everyone that wants to be skinny and look like these models. No. Size 12, 14, 14 is perfect for me. Perfect All right. for me. All right. Okay. I might be that 14, son. I don't know. I haven't bought any clothes. Okay. All right. So that's it. That's it. So do what you can and you know, just that's inspiration all around us. I mean, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or people that you see doing things a little different, mm -hmm. uh, different alternative way of living. Uh, Monique is actually doing the same thing. Like she changed, she's been exercising. Uh, Monique, the comedian, uh, exercising. She's, she's more on a plant-based diet and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another inspiration that you can follow. Uh, and that's that. All right. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. We enjoy <laughs> sharing with you guys. We enjoy sharing. Yeah. All right. So again, we had the uh, baked cauliflower and we used, it was a chili garlic uh, sauce uh, along with barbecue sauce that we put on it. We have couscous uh, that was um, sauteed uh, with uh, onions, garlic, and a little bit of salt. And that's, that's it. So again, you can eat this as a snack or you can incorporate it with the milk. Whatever you choose to do. It's a nice alternative for chicken, chicken mites, or whatever. Just change the way you think. Um, no one's trying to make it taste like chicken or anything like that. But sometimes you just want a little bit of seasoning. Because here's the thing. The same seasonings that you, you season your chicken with or your meat is the same seasoning, seasonings uh, and herbs that you, you, you will uh, season your cauliflower with and your other foods. So imagine, imagine trying to eat your meat without seasoning. You're not going to like it. You're going to just toss it out. It smells bad before you cook it because it's rotting. For one, and for two, it's not gonna taste good. Okay, so this is it, all right? And so this is the first source of proteins. So people say, where do you get your protein from? Well, if you're eating a cow or you're eating some type of animal, you're eating a second source of protein because that cow and that, whatever well, animal it 
is, is getting their source of protein from the grass, mm -hmm. right? So these lettuce has protein in it, cauliflower has protein in it, mm -hmm. the couscous has protein in it. You don't need as much protein as you think you need. Right. Everything is protein. Mm -hmm. And we did put coconut milk in there. Oh yeah, and coconut milk, all right? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's that. I hope you enjoyed this show, this segment, and um, I look forward to seeing you again. Please like, share, and comment, and as always, take care of yourself and each other, and always walk in love. Peace. Subscribe. <laughs> Subscribe. Yes,